Oke, and welcome to this prominent Vertical landmark called the Big Rock, or Oketok in black. A wonderful place to acknowledge the traditional territories where my history show is filmed. Welcome to the History Wranglers History Show. It'll make your day. Please welcome the host of your show, the History Wrangler. Hey! All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the History Wrangler High Noon Summer Alberta History Show. It's great to have you here. Now, come with me. Here we go. as I love my horse flame. In this segment, I would like to feature two rodeo legends, Dee Butterfield and the four-legged legendary horse, Junior. Now, Dee learned to barrel race at the age of 12 years old, and she collected 15 championships with the Canadian Girls Rodeo Association. She then went on to be crowned the 1992 Canadian Champion Barrel Racer and qualified for the Canadian Finals Rodeo 11 times with five different horses. Dee has also taught many barrel racing champions over the years, including Calgary Stampede Champions and two-time world champion Lindsay Sears. In regards to the four-legged rodeo legend, Junior, Junior was one of the finest horses used for roping by some of the finest ropers in North America, including Kenny McLeod, who rode Junior to win both the Canadian Championship and the Calgary Stampede in 1972, and Tom Ferguson, who won the Calgary Stampede title in 1973, the same year that Junior earned the award of the best rope horse. Thanks for joining Flame and I, and have a great day. Oh, have you heard the news about the history corral? It's down at the ranch, don't tell your pals. We got Susan and Fudge, rest of the water world. We got Susan and Fudge, just west of Take it away, History Wrangler. Thanks for the introduction and welcome to the History Corral just west of the water well and not far from the Red Barn. Now today I'd like to share that Prime Minister Joe Clark, the 16th Prime Minister from High River, seconded the motion on the bill to have the beaver become official emblem on March 24th, 1975. And to celebrate the 40th anniversary, the historic Bow Valley Ranch welcomed Billy Bo Burns the beaver down to the ranch. Yahoo! Cheers and have a blue sky day. Well, let me introduce you to Karis and Eclipse. They love jumping through the air. What a sport your jumping is. Now they're going to share some history with you from the world famous Spruce Meadows Sports. Thanks for the introduction, Victoria, and welcome to my historic segments on the world-famous Bruce Meadows. In this segment, I'd like to feature Albertan Linda Southern Hethcott, the daughter of Ron and Marg Southern, who created Spruce Meadows, an accomplished professional show jumper who was a member of the Canadian Equestrian Team for nine years, where she competed at numerous world-class events, including the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. Miss Southern Hethcott is very busy these days and her many roles include being the President and Chief Executive Officer of Spruce Meadows and the Honorary Colonel of King's Own Calgary Regiment. In regards to Spruce Meadows history, on June 29, 1990, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II visited Spruce Meadows and one of the family of horses, bronzes, that were commissioned was dedicated to Her Majesty. Until next time, I'm Karis, who loves my horse more than all the chocolate in Paris. Three ladies and gentlemen, round of applause ladies and gentlemen for Stephanie Keeper and Teacher West. He also won two 
two Stanley Cups. What team did he win Stanley Cups with in 1942 and 1945, and what position did he play? Thank you very much, Stephanie. Yes. Teacher West. Okay, your options are, number one, uh, the Montreal Canadiens, and he played goalie. Number two, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he played forward. Number three, the Chicago Blackhawks, and he played defense. And option number four, the Edmonton Flames, and he was the water boy. All right, the water boy. Okay, let's, let's start that countdown. Right? Come on now. Five, five, Here we go. What is your answer? One, two, three, or four? One. One. Is it number one? No, it is not number one. Yeah. Is it three, two, one? Let's start the countdown. Sorry. Three, two, one. Yes. Two. That is correct. That is correct. Good day everyone, Nikki Middleton, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Métis, international award-winning model, fitness model, and actress. Dunze on today's Métis historical segment. I'm very pleased, as usual, to share information on the remarkable Edward Beaupré. The Willow Bunch giant, Edward Beaupré was born January 9th, 1881 a normal child until he was three years old. He started suddenly growing in an alarming way, so much that at the age of nine, his height was measured at six feet. Wow. At 12 years, six foot six, and at only 17 years old, he'd reached seven feet, one inches. Edward, also known as the Willow Bunch Giant, grew to a staggering height of eight foot two and weighed 370 pounds. In 1904, he joined the circus at the World's Fair in St. Louis, where he would show his amazing strength, which included lifting an 800 pound horse. Yes, you heard me right, an 18, 800 pound horse. I'm Nikki Middleton. Thanks for joining me. And as they say in Mashif, the Métis language, Minaka Wapamatin, which means I'll see you again. On August 31st, 1909, he was appointed the Chief of Police for the City of Calgary at a salary of $150 per month. Chief Mackey was instrumental in advancing the Calgary Police Force in many ways, including the following. He acquired forces to form a mounted patrol, he created a specialized detective department, and he introduced a motorized paddy wagon known as the Black Maria to take the culprits away. 
A very honest and fair man, the police chief became known around town as Honest Tom Mackey. Thanks for sharing some time with the rodeo loving history gal. Yahoo! Oh, He's very smart. He loves a Rocky Mountain with all his heart. Well, he wants to share what he thinks is chic. Alberta's highest mountains and name of their peaks. Alberta's highest mountains and name of their peaks. Alberta's highest mountains and names of their peaks. Mountain Mark? Yeah! Hello! I'm Mountain Mark, coming from the base of Mount Kid in Kananaskis Park. Now, I love sharing my mountain peak history, and without further ado, it's time to start. One of my favorite Alberta mountain peaks is Mount Alberta, which is depicted on the top of my walking stick. <laughs> It's one of Alberta's highest mountains. It stands 3,619 meters or 11,873 feet high. It was named in 1898 by Norman Collie, and it's named after Princess Louise Caroline Alberta, the fourth daughter of Queen Victoria, whom the wonderful province of Alberta is named after. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Mountain Mark from Mount Kid in Kananaskis Park. <laughs> well, have you heard the news about the history of Thanks for the introduction and welcome to the History Corral just west of the water well. Now today I'd like to share that back on October 27, 1951, then Princess Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh watched the CFL Western Semi-Finals football game at Clark Stadium in Edmonton from close to the sidelines. And also after watching a rodeo in cold Calgary, she's given an electric blanket. Cheers and have a blue sky day. Now Courtney is a fifth generation cowgirl, her family ranch is near Pincher Creek. Well, she's traveled around the world as a stampede princess, and loves horses and the Calgary Stampede. And loves horses and the Calgary Stampede. Take it away, Courtney. Howdy. The theme for this Calgary Stampede historical segment is the 1923 Calgary Stampede. The 1923 Stampede started with a five kilometer long parade featuring five bands and 2,000 participants. It was led by Calgary Mayor George Webster, who was dressed as a cowboy and set the tone for the entire city. Calgary's downtown was also closed down for two hours every morning to permit for street dancing, and the first Stampede breakfasts were served they're still a big part of the tradition at today's Stampede. That year, introduced were chuck wagon races, along with wild horse races and wild cow milking. Cowboy contestant Eddie King rode his horse into a cafe. 10,000 people were served barbecue buffalo at the closing event, and the oldest man and woman in Western Canada both received buffalo robes. Yahoo! For the history of the Calgary Stampede. Well, hello, my name is Ash. I'm reporting with BBC. And I'm here to share with you British royalty. So sit back and relax with a cup of tea. I love my British royalty. And sharing it across the sea. And sharing it across the sea. Cheerio! Today is Monday, July 7th, 1968, and what a delightful time the Duke and Duchess of Kent are having at the Calgary Stampede, the greatest outdoor show on earth this year. 
They finally opened the Stampede last Friday, July 4th, which was a special treat for all the American visitors. And this morning, they both rode horses in the Calgary Stampede. Until next time, I'm Sash, reporting for BBC from across the great big sea. Cheerio! See with horse are racing, and those horses go around the track. Such action almost gives me a heart attack. Now Roy's a 50 race winner, is going to teach you some horse racing history and take you on back. Yes, Roy from the Flying Cross Ranch in Central Alberta is going to teach you some horse racing history and take you on back. Yeah, take it away, Roy. And they're off. I'm Roy Sturgeon from Flying Cross Ranch. I'm a retired jockey and I'm here to talk to you about the history of horse racing in Alberta. So another rider I want to talk about what I think is probably one of the most instrumental riders in Alberta is a guy named Johnny Longdon. Johnny Longdon was raised in Coaldale, Alberta. Johnny Longdon was a lot of things. Johnny Longdon was born in England and Johnny's family was booked to be on the Titanic. And the reason Johnny Longdon made it is their train was late and they missed the boat. And he would have died because they were poor and he would have been in steerage. So Johnny came to Canada, he started riding on the small Canadian Alberta tracks like we did and went to the States and Johnny Longdon was, um, he was the only rider in history to, w to win the Kentucky Derby as a rider and then turn around and come back and win it as a trainer. The other thing about Johnny Longdon, there was a guy named RJ Spears who was basically the founder of the, the racing in Canada, the prairie racing in the early days. And him and Johnny were friends and Johnny never forgot his roots. He sent horses and money up here for years to make sure that racing could continue on the prairies till it got going on its own. He was, in his day, he won over 6,000 races. At one time, he was the most winningest rider in North America. Not anymore, but in his day, he was. And everybody that ever met the man said he was just the best person that they ever knew. See you next time from the home of the junior jockeys from Flying Cross Ranch. Howdy, I'm the History Wrangler, and thank you ever so much for watching the show today. On a side note, I'm actually coming from Little Chicago, a small little town that actually existed. Some of the best schools in Alberta, I understand, is okay, just south of Black Diamond, no longer exists. So again, History Angle, thank you ever so much for watching the show. We'll see you next time. I'm looking for a pump track. Have you guys seen a pump track? Oh yeah, I think I see a pump track.